Hello everyone, it's Sarah here from Chilly Pilates. This week we're talking about those of you who are running and cycling as part of your fantastic daily exercise. Getting out there, getting some fresh air and sunshine, getting your heart rate up, keeping your lungs healthy and keeping your body moving. Whilst that's absolutely fantastic, there are maybe some other things that you could be doing. So how many of you, especially runners, just grab your trainers, stick them on, head out the door and start running. Albeit at a slightly gentler pace when you first start going, but do you do a proper warm up and a cool down? Okay, those are two really important aspects of any type of exercise, is to get the body moving, get the muscles warm, get the joints moving before you start the exercise. Okay, that way you reduce your risk of injury and you also help to redress any imbalances that there might be in the body. So what I'd like you to try and do is before you stick your trainers on, just a few minutes exercise without your shoes on. Okay, so you can do it barefoot or you can have your socks on, but we also need to work the feet because when they're confined in those cycling shoes or in those trainers, um, the foot isn't moving as it naturally would. So it's really important that we look after our feet too. So very simply, I'm going to get you to just stand with your heels underneath your hip bones, spread your toes out. Make sure both your feet are pointing forwards rather than turned in or turned out. Okay, so foot pedals. We'll get the arms moving as well. You're going to take a breath in and a breath out. So you're just allowing that heel to lift and I'm actually pushing it forwards to get a really good stretch in the toes and in the arch of the foot. So just a few minutes doing this can really save you from lots of other discomfort that you might experience if you don't do a proper warm up. You only need to do a few, and it's also really getting those calves working. You can probably feel them while you're doing this. Okay, we're going to take that a little bit higher. Can you lift your knee? And roll back down. So let's start to get all the muscles warmed up and moving. Now while you're doing this, what I'd like you to try and do is take a big breath in through the nose and a long breath out through the mouth. How many of you come back from your run or your cycling and you've got really tight shoulders and neck? Okay, that's very probably because of a shallow breathing pattern. So you end up going <laughs> and breathing into the shoulders and they're going up and down as you run rather than keeping them down and feeling that expansion all the way around here. So let's just take a moment to think about our breath. Breathing in through the nose. And I want you to try and feel that that breath goes into your hand. So it stretches your thumb away from your fingers. So we're getting expansion all the way around down here. So try and notice that when you're out cycling or running, if you get stuck into a shallow breathing pattern or if you're getting a nice big full breath, okay? It's going to help you with your stamina and help you to keep going. Right, we need to think about hips now, because as I said yesterday, it's very much a forward plane of movement. So there's lots of muscles in the pelvic area that help to stabilise you, which maybe aren't getting recruited and being as active as they should be. And one of those that I've noticed in myself this last week is the glute med, okay? That's one of your main pelvic stabilisers. Sometimes another muscle, the TFL, can take over and cause us problems, tight hips, and we get really achy here. So a good one to activate the glute med, just standing tall. I want you to turn your leg in slightly. Now make sure that comes from the hip rather than the knee. So rotate from the hip, and you're going to push that leg back and lift, just on a slight diagonal. Push and lift, and you should feel a lovely squeeze right here. Okay. So this is going to save you from those tight achy hips. It's going to help to stabilise your pelvis more when you're running. So a few of these, get that glute med active and warmed up and hopefully it'll stay active when you're running and cycling. So 
of course we need to do the other side so turning in think of pushing your heel away so it's not going behind you it's just going on a slight diagonal and you might find you're getting a bit of a stretch here so we're trying not to arch the back as we do this one more and down okay taking the arms up let's activate those shoulders so bring them down into a W now keep your shoulders down and push up through from your shoulder blades inhale down get that big breath in exhale pushing up so this is going to help to activate and stabilize the shoulders so hopefully you'll get a little bit less of that shoulder breathing and the shoulders jogging up and down as you run. One more. And down. Okay, onto the hamstrings and quads now. So a few lunges, but doing them properly. So make sure you stay hip distance. Step one foot back onto the ball of the foot, okay, and you're going to hinge slightly forwards. Shoulders over your toes. Now I'm going to get you to take your hands onto your hips so that you can feel if they stay level. And also, you're using that thumb to see if your back muscles switch on. If they are, then you need to focus on keeping your hips level and your leg muscles doing the work rather than your back. Okay, so we're going to lower down as though you're about to fasten your shoelaces without bending your back and pushing back up. Now you should feel that this muscle here underneath your thumb stays soft and your knees go forwards. So if you're using your back, your hip will lift and your knee will turn inwards. That's going to cause knee pain and problems. So feel that hamstring switch on. One more, and changing sides. So let's lower down and push back up. So really important that you keep that tilt, that hinge forwards. Just notice what you're feeling here. Let's get those leg muscles nice and active. One last one, and up. Okay, a little bit of core now. Let's get that core active. Let's sway forwards into the toes, and then press back into the heels. Just watch for locking those knees out or bending backwards. So it's gonna activate your core to stop you bending. Let's sway forwards, and sway back. Don't worry if you overdo it and you step out of it. That's fine. Okay, now for the arms. So you're gonna go back to those foot pedals, but we're gonna pull the arm back. Really lift that elbow up behind you without dropping the shoulder forwards. Pull back. So you're really lifting. Now let's add in a little bit of rotation, but I want you to make sure that happens from above your hips. So you're going to turn, keep your hips pointing forward so that you feel it here. And pull back and recover. Shoulders are staying down and we're activating the obliques now. So one more each way. Okay, you're ready to pop those trainers on or those cycling shoes and off you go. Enjoy your ride or your run.